Isn't it amazing? We get things that we want to do, but in the process we run into hurdles. And yesterday, when I was taking those pallets apart, I needed to get my circular saw out. And all of my mounting hardware, screws and what have you, was in the way. So I had to empty it out. So this is what I've got. An empty cabinet on the right hand of this, this pallet wood machine stand that I built last summer. And I'm going to do what Jay Bates did with his, and that's to build some drawers. And I think just right now I'm just going to concentrate on getting a lower drawer that's about uh, four inches all the way around. So I'm going to measure and start beefing up for the drawer slides with a two before. So I'm measuring that right now to see what I need. Prior to cutting all my boards to the dimensions, I'm going to dress up all the edges on these two befores to take the rounded corners off. And I'll do these to all of the boards that I think I'm going to need for this project. I begin ripping my boards to their width using my fence. And then I switch over to my crosscut sled, which is also doubles as a tapering jig. Prior to cutting them to the, the length, I ensure that the beginning edge is square. And then I measured them for, I think it was like 20 and 3 quarters inches, and cut them to length. I take the pieces that I just cut back over to the cabinet. Now let's see if that measuring twice and cut once works. Well, I'll be doggone. That does work. That's a good tip to remember. So this uh, two by four fits in there, and that's what the uh, the drawer slides are actually going to fit on. And then this other two by four is going on top, and that's the reason I'm doing that is so I can close off that cavity, so I don't have any loose hardware, dirt, or dust to get down in the crevice on the other side of that two by four. Oh, I got a splinter. The method of securing the two befores into the cabinet will be used with pocket hole screws. So I take all my pieces over to my Craig pocket hole jig and uh, begin drilling all the holes that's required to secure it properly into the cabinet. After all my pocket holes were made, I went ahead and connected with uh, two screws this top plate to the side uh, guide slide support and then I put uh, some pocket screws to hold it in the top and then four into the floor. On this side I did the same thing except I plan for future expansion just in case I decide to put a drawer on this side of the cabinet. I went ahead and just made like a U-channel and put another uh, drawer guide support on this side. Before making my drawers, I will have to buy my drawer guides so that I know how wide to make the actual drawer. I went ahead and just put this flush to this side and then I made a block that would uh, slide from front to block back. And before I screwed this side down to ensure that this face here was parallel with this face. That way, hopefully, when I get my, my guides put in there, if there's a little bit of slop in the ball bearings, it'll, it'll save me, hopefully, from any binding drawers. But with this spacer in there, that'll ensure that I've got most of my uh, inaccuracies taken care of. Well, after making a trip to the local box store, I was able to purchase these full extension drawer slides. And they have a weight limit of 100 pounds when fully extended. They are a ball bearing construction and they actually come apart. So I'll be using these in the construction phase of this uh, project. I took some of the pine from my, my pallet wood and I ripped them a little bit oversized, and I'll tell you why in just a few moments. 
I made these 22 and a half inches long and then I made these one inch shorter than the opening that I have down there in the drawer. Now the reason I made them just a little bit wider than I actually want the drawer is because I want, and it's yet to be decided, probably the ones with the finger stick protruding on the top and bottom will be the front of the drawer and then the the cutout portions will be on the side but my dado stack I can't get exactly a half inch I probably could have if I used shims and things of that sort but it's just a hair over but nonetheless I got my box joint jig set where I'm kind of happy with this because uh, it's a little bit loose but by the time I add the glue to it it'll swell and hopefully it'll make a good joint there but on the bottom I've probably got half of the finger so before I go in the glue up I'll take this back over to my rip put my fence on here and then rip this by uh, put this good side up against the fence and cut this remaining excess off so that I will have you know a symmetrical looking box by the time this all goes together. Let's get these boards on this jig and make some sawdust. This jig that I built, I actually got it off the internet off of a, a YouTube channel, Laney Shaughnessy. And uh, he did a really fine job in explaining how to build this uh, box joint jig. And I've only used it one other time and this is my second time but I started with uh, making the cuts on the front and back and then I used the front as a guide to properly get the starting uh, point on the side of the drawer pieces and I'm getting those cut right now uh, as I mentioned earlier, I had the boards a little bit wider, and then once I determined how many fingers I wanted out, I'm just cutting off this uh, fractional piece of what tooth was left. That way everything is even. Every, every slot is a half inch, plus or minus, whatever the width of the blade is, and so is the... Uh, the uh, tenon portion of it. So uh, I went ahead and just left my dado stack in here and did the cut. I didn't have any plywood so I went ahead and I'm cutting down some uh, three quarter inch stock to half inch and I begin to cut the dados for the, that to fit into the bottom. I'm planning on uh, offsetting the dados so that in a future shot you'll see that they don't line up as they go all the way around so when I get ready to to cut my rabbits in my bottom uh, drawer piece that'll fit in there I'm gonna have to have those rabbits offset as well and you'll see that in just a moment here I'm cleaning out the the uh, dados. There was just a hair line of wood between the two joints. Now right here you can see where the dados are offset and that's so that it doesn't come through to the outside of the drawer. And there I'm gluing up my bottom and it, pretty soon we'll be able to uh, Put that in the drawer as soon as the glue dries. My drawer bottom is still in glue up here, but folks, I'm telling you what, your retention level drops off after about eight or nine minutes. If you're still with me, I really appreciate it. Uh, but we're going to cut this and make it part one. Come back in a day or two and we'll have part two as we finish up this drawer 
and I can get all this crap off the floor and put it back in where it needs to be. Because in three days I go in for my surgery on my knee and I'll probably be out for a week or so. So don't look for part two for maybe another week. Unless you're lucky. <laughs> hey, stay safe in the shop and make some sawdust.